sometimes I'm too beautiful for words. I'm just gonna say, hey, hi everybody. It's me, Wilma Fingerdoo, with the Fingerdoo Review of RuPaul's Drag Race Holland Season 2, Episode 6. But before we get started, I want to remind you to give this video a thumbs up if you like it, and subscribe to my channel down below if you haven't yet, while you're down there. If you'd like to support the Finger Do Review by becoming a tipper do, buying some merch on Redbubble, or joining the Finger Do family on Patreon, well, those links are in the description box down below. Now, let's get to it. Pour, hey, drink me. Ooh. Where's my little umbrella? How am I going to keep track of how many of these I've had? It fell out. But you don't bend over to pick things up anymore? I don't pay you enough to bend over. <laughs> I had a nickel. Mmm. G and T. Yummo. All right. The queens kicked this episode off by bidding the Countess a fond farewell. As cold and aloof as she tried to come off, the Countess actually connected pretty well with all the queens. But no one was going to miss her more than Vivaldi because with the Countess gone, Vivaldi felt she was alone in a room full of bitches. Her words, not mine. I would have used the word c Of course, the remaining queens had to celebrate making it to the top five and congratulating Vanessa on her first win. I'm surprised no one pointed out to Tabitha that she still didn't have a badge. <laughs> Vanessa. Not to worry, they pointed that fact out to Tabitha the next day. What better way to kick off a new week in the workroom than by tearing down a fellow queen? Tabitha didn't seem to mind. She was quite happy to brush her locks and rock her Barbie necklace. So would I, I'm so serious. The necklace part, not the brush part. Why did she have a hairbrush? I'm just asking. Of course, Tabitha not having a badge made her the choice to go home next. But as she pointed out, badges don't seem to be helping because, well, the Countess had a badge. And look where she is now. Tabitha declared it would be her making the finale and... Well, Keta told her she'd need better outfits to do that. Come on, she's not wrong. Vanessa, regardless of what she says in public, still obviously hates Vivaldi for some reason because Vivaldi was her choice to go home next. To her face, Vanessa told Vivaldi she agrees with the judges about her being young and having room to grow. All Vivaldi heard was young, and as far as she was concerned, that was reason enough for her to win. 21. But before the bickering could start again, it was time for Rue's video message. This week's message was all about coffee, men, and spilling the tea, which left all the queens scratching their heads until Fred showed up with this week's mini challenge. With the help of the entire pit crew, and I do mean entire, one by one, the queens would have to match emoji icons, and the one who had the most matches would be the winner. Simple. But, as this is Holland's Drag Race, the pit crew were wearing jock straps and the emoji were painted on their assets. Their beautiful, fuzzy assets. So, <laughs> as you can imagine, some of the queens had trouble remembering even their names with that display within fondling distance. <laughs> I would have done it. As fun as this was to watch, I can't show you the highlights here if I still want to remain monetized. But I will say... I would have picked numbers one and two for the match all day long with a pinch of four to keep it interesting. I don't know. Pinching four would keep it interesting for me is all I'm telling you. I'm just saying. So when the cabooses had all been returned to the train yard, Poonie was revealed to be the winner with five matches. Here's to Poonie. <laughs> and what did she win? Well, she got to choose her part in the maxi challenge, which would have the Queens hosting a morning TV show while reading their lines off the teleprompter. Ooh. The queens wasted no time in reading the script because everyone but Poonie would have to fight for their role of choice. Poonie got the first pick and went with one of the co-hosts. Vanessa and Tapita both wanted to be the psychic, but Tapita backed down, probably because Vanessa's desire to play that role seemed to be bigger than both of them. Good for Tapita. History never seems to favor those who fight for a role, unless you're at the dinner table, I'm just saying. Who rolls? Vivaldi wanted to be the wig expert, and why shouldn't she? She styled wigs for Envy, Madness, and Fred, no less, in season one. Here's the Vivaldi so talented at 21. 
Kenna wanted to be the other co-host, but then so did Tabitha. So to break this tie, it was put to Puni because after all, she'd be the one who'd have to work with whomever took the co-host role. I don't think it was a big surprise to anyone that she chose her ex, Keta Minaj. Poor Tabitha. And then it was off to the set to record the show. Waiting for them with Fred was the queen of Dutch television, Catherine Kale, who had some good advice for the queens, one of which was to know their lines regardless because, well, sometimes the teleprompter can fail and go blank. Well, if that's not a warning, I don't know what is, seriously. Right off the top, there were two big problems. Poonie's tits. They just were not going to fit into her OTT for morning TV top, bless. But they finally wrangled those puppies, and it was lights, camera, action. Even though it was a rehearsal, I was super impressed by Poonie and Ketta as the hosts. Sure, there were mistakes, but that's what a rehearsal's for. Now... I know it's supposed to be live TV, but I'm glad they did give them a rehearsal until it got confusing. They kept saying they were going live and then Fred would pop up with some direction or advice. So I'm not sure what happened when. Vivaldi and Tabitha seemed to do all right. I thought Vivaldi did a great job, which tells you she's done this slut character so often now I'm numb to it. Tabitha, on the other hand, seemed to need a lot of direction, but for the most part, it was just a little tweaking, and to be honest, she seemed to be grateful to be tweaked. What did you say? Vanessa made a choice. She chose to go down the stereotypical turban-wearing mystical mistress route. I have to say I was disappointed because it's been done to death. I would have loved for her to do a Betsy Johnson-type woman and keep it light and fun, but, well, she didn't. But she didn't suck. It was the script that sucked. Still, I thought she was doing pretty good until the incident. That's what I've chosen to call it because I feel it's the linchpin for this whole episode. And thanks to those of you out there who remember that linchpin was my drag queen name in high school. And what was the incident? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Vanessa's turban slipped off. She was in mid-sentence, threw her head back in the spiritual moment of it all, and well, her turban slipped off. The only reason it was awkward is that Vanessa gasped, oh, sh and kind of froze there for a minute or two. And then she popped up, pulled the turban back into place, kind of, and we'll finish the scene. But clearly, she was upset that it happened. And then after they were done filming, while Fred and Catherine were elsewhere, someone had a camera recording as Vanessa went round to the crew and cast, asking how she did and if she was funny. Well, this bothered Vivaldi enough so that when Vanessa came round to her, Vivaldi asked if she was going to ask everyone, to which Vanessa asked, why does that bother you? And Vivaldi flatly said, yes. Now let me start by saying Vivaldi was wrong. Clearly, Vanessa was angry about the turban incident and was looking for someone to fight with. But she's 21. She's an idiot. <laughs> but to be fair, if I'm going to bring up age, Vanessa is 42, and for her to get angry at someone the way she did is a little embarrassing. First off, she accused Vivaldi of being insensitive to her hair issues. Vivaldi wasn't being insensitive, she was being ignorant. She didn't know, and it didn't stop there. She complained about the incident and Vivaldi's arrogance with the rest of the cast in front of her. Vivaldi seemed nonplussed. Can I just take a moment to say, Vanessa popping up to say how dangerous it is when she gets mad doesn't make it okay. Seriously. Anyway, things came to a head in the workroom as the queens were indeed dragging. I don't know why, but clearly Vanessa had been stewing in her own juices or complaining to production, but when she entered the workroom, everyone else was out of drag. So I don't know how orchestrated this whole situation was, but... Tabitha's inquiry to what was going on with the two of them was the invitation Vanessa needed to attack. She started off by hitting play on her Vivaldi is Arrogant playlist. Then Vanessa threw the rest of the cast under the bus by saying that they all thought Vivaldi was arrogant too. Whether that was true or not, it wasn't her place to say that. And then she talked about the phone. In her angry attack on Vivaldi, Vanessa let everyone know that Vivaldi had a cell phone in her room. Apparently, Vivaldi had told her about it in secrecy, and now Vanessa was telling everyone about it. Now, don't get me wrong. Vivaldi broke the rules, but I would have been more impressed by Vanessa if she'd told production when she'd first learned about the phone. 
The reason she was bringing it up now was it proved that she was honest and Vivaldi was fake. Funny. I thought she was arrogant. But Vanessa's right. Vivaldi did break the rules by having a phone, but for her to have kept that secret to herself and then use it in a way to get someone else eliminated instead of herself, which is exactly how it looks to me, isn't right. Personally, I felt that the only thing Vanessa proved is that she's as bad as Vivaldi. If only she had told production about the phone in the first place. Seriously. The whole shebang ended with no resolution. Vivaldi finally stormed off while Vanessa mewed and whined away to anyone who'd listen. This made the next day in the workroom very awkward. The queens tried to start off on a light note by posing as Fred's angels while Vivaldi shot Vanessa in the back of the head with a banana. Like you do. Vanessa, on the other hand, was taking the high road by calling Vivaldi the false D. Seriously. At this point, I wanted Fred to kick them both out. Speaking of, Fred looked extra gorgeous on the runway in a patent vinyl dress with a stunning platinum wig with black rhinestone accents. This isn't the first time I've seen a wig like this, and I have to say, I just love this look, especially on Fred. Joining Fred at the judges' table was semi-regular Carlo Bozard, singer and actress Meryl, and, as always, Marike Simalo. Category is Opposites Attract. First up, Tabata going from a wedding to a funeral. Let's hope that wasn't all on the same day as all I'm saying. I like both these looks, but they were very simple. Still, there's nothing more opposite than a wedding or a funeral, so I gave her a pinky do. Vanessa was next, representing life and death. I have to say, her life was breathtakingly beautiful, but her death looked like a Halloween store costume. Even the makeup was boring. Pinky do for Vanessa. Vivaldi's Cupid and Cupid Don't was stunning. There, I said it. These looks were fresh and fun and really brightened up what so far was a pretty dull runway. So, finger do for Vivaldi. I gave Keta Minaj's yin and yang look a finger do too. From the Elvira look to the white flapper, it was stunning. And then both looks became opposites again. Although I have to say the white flapper transition was more successful from white to black than the Elvira going from black to white. But then I'm biased because White Flapper was also my drag queen name in high school. <laughs> Poonie's love and hate looks were okay. She looked good in both of them, but they didn't wow me, so they got a pinky do too. Top five. Such a mediocre runway. And then it was time for the judges' critiques, or it would have been if Fred didn't kick it all off by asking Vivaldi about her secret phone. In Vivaldi's defense, she owned up to it like a champ. She didn't make excuses, she didn't try and explain it away, and what's even more important is that she didn't invoke the name of Vanessa. Not that it was Vanessa's doing that she had a phone, but it was more than Vanessa's doing that anyone else found out about it. Fred made a huge show of being angry at Vivaldi and saying that not only the other queens were upset, but so was the jury. Vivaldi apologized to all the queens and panels, saying that she doesn't apologize often, but that this one was heartfelt. Before any decision could be made, Fred asked the queens to share their feelings about the whole thing. Tabata and Keta said Vivaldi should be disqualified. So did Vanessa, of course, but when Vivaldi assured them that she only had the phone because of her depression, Vanessa accused Vivaldi of calling her mom. I'm guessing to plan their makeover episode? I don't know. Both Vivaldi and Vanessa just continued to call each other liars. Puni was the only one who really didn't know what to say about it all. She seemed genuinely shocked and hurt. Poor Puni. Fred thought it would be best to leave it for now and come back to it after the judges deliberated. Then it got awkward as the judges continued with the critique. With that specter of cheating hanging over the room, the judges seemed to like everyone, but Tapita got poor marks for holding back on the runway. Vanessa and Vivaldi got poor marks for their acting. Both Keta and Puni were praised for their hosting skills, though both got a couple of low marks for their runway. I don't know about you, but I thought it was wrong to go on with the critiques like nothing had happened. I think they should have sent the girls to the Untucked Lounge right after Vivaldi's apology and sorted everything out right then and there. But then it's not called Wilma Fingerdue's Drag Race. Of course, it's not called Fred's Drag Race either. Back in the Untucked Lounge, both Tabata and Keta wished Vivaldi had apologized sooner, but 
all the queens seemed happy that she'd done it at all. They all seemed to be good with how things went and were happy to move forward, probably because they all were expecting that Vivaldi would be disqualified the minute they returned to the main stage. Okay, mostly Vanessa. When the queens did return to the main stage, it was announced that Keta Minaj was this week's winner, making her the season's front runner with three badges. Here's to Keta, I'm so serious. As for who was in the bottom, I don't think it was a surprise that it was Tabata and this week's problem child, Vivaldi, but the reason Fred gave was that she couldn't just dismiss Vivaldi. If she was going to stay, she was going to have to fight for it. Clearly, Tabata was not pleased. Me either, but let me be clear. Yes, I think Vivaldi should have been disqualified for cheating, but if they were going to send her home, I feel that Vanessa should have been disqualified too. She knew about the phone and still did nothing till now. She only had a problem at it when she was grasping at straws to stay in the game. As for Tabata, it sucks that she was in the bottom, but of the final five queens, she is the least impressive, no offense. For all her bravado, she always seems to fall short of the challenges and is the only queen not to win a badge, bless. But having her lip sync against a cheater was a low blow. We all knew Tabitha wasn't going to win this lip sync and, well, she didn't. But then, I really don't think Tabitha has what it takes to win the crown. If she wasn't going this week, it would have been next. I'm just saying. As for the lip sync itself, Vivaldi pulled out all the stops, even throwing her death drops into the mix. Tabitha had a reveal with a sporty onesie under her dress, but I have to say, her bathing suit area was disappointingly distracting. It didn't fit well, and there were obvious undergarments poking out of the leg opening. And then, she kicked off her heels. Didn't she do that in a lip sync once before? Not that Tabitha didn't give it her all. She was clearly outshone by Vivaldi, so it was no surprise to me that Vivaldi shantayed and, well, Tabitha sashayed away. Now, I can understand why people would be mad at this outcome, but in my opinion, the only way Tabitha would have been able to stay in the competition would have been to disqualify Vivaldi. Why they didn't do that is beyond me. Say it. There are so many issues surrounding the choices this episode, and I want to say again that my opinions are my own. Am I sorry to see Tabitha Sashay? Yes. Am I sorry that Vivaldi's still in the competition? No. Do I think she deserves to win the crown? Well, not after she got caught cheating, no. What do you think? Should they have kicked Vivaldi out? Should Vanessa be held accountable on any level for all this drama? Did Tabitha deserve to stay? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, don't forget to like this video if you did. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And please check out the links in the description box if you'd like to support the Finger Do Review through PayPal, Redbubble, or by joining the Finger Do family on Patreon. And until next week, miss me! Mwah! Seriously, Martin. It's too bad that Vivaldi got caught cheating, but then it's interesting too that they didn't kick her out right away. I mean, after all, she did do Fred's wigs last year. I mean, if that doesn't factor into it somehow, I feel like if people have worked on the show before, they should accept to not be eligible to be on the show because there's clearly a consideration that goes with that, you know, some favoritism, unless of course they were a terrible worker and got fired and whatever, but I don't know. I would, have, I would have felt better about Vivaldi staying if she hadn't worked on season one of Drag Race Holland. I'm just saying. I mean, she might not have been on their payroll, but I mean, the wig, it's important. It's right there. It's in every shot. 